guys, what's up? So as promised today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you all a morning skincare routine for beginners starting over-the-counter 2% hydroquinone, either for melasma or brightening dark spots of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. I have a prior video that is a Q&A all about hydroquinone if you have questions about it, so make sure you check that out. Um, this is the over-the-counter 2% hydroquinone that I'm going to be using today for um, purposes of this video. It is MD complete. Um, I reviewed this for you all a while back. This is available over-the-counter in CVS and Target. In addition to containing 2% hydroquinone, uh, which is the active ingredient that targets um, that targets tyrosinase, the enzyme that makes pigment and is going to help with brightening. It also has alpha arbutin in it. Alpha arbutin is a natural precursor to hydroquinone that is then converted to hydroquinone. So this is a little bit more potent than some of the other over-the-counter 2% hydroquinones out there, okay? Um, and so you should know that about it, but they're all more or less fairly similar, and I will list some other ones down below. The shortcoming of all of them, this one included, is that they have fragrance. If you've been watching my videos for any period of time, you know that I try and encourage you to avoid fragrance at all costs, but it's really, really hard to avoid it in an over-the-counter hydroquinone cream. They almost all have, have fragrance. So do you know that? Um, and as I have said in the video, um, the most common the most common consequence of using hydroquinone is irritation. It's irritating. It stings. Sometimes um, it can make the skin just really irritated. Some people interpret that as quote purging. It's not purging. It's just irritation. And um, the thing that is really really important for the, for using this and for treating dark spots, melasma, to get you the best results and to make this go as, as well as possible for you, is you have to really, really focus the skincare routine on sun protection and minimizing any other kind of irritating ingredients along the way, okay? So hopefully in this morning's skincare routine, I'm gonna show you how I do that. And again, this is for dark spots, um, you know, healing acne that heals with a dark spot or melasma. Now, if you all have watched my skincare routines for any period of time, you know that first thing in the morning, I start out washing acne-prone areas in my face with a 2% salicylic acid face wash. I'm currently using this La Roche-Posay one. Um, if you're curious at all about this, check out my skincare routine and my BHA video. Uh, but the nice thing about using a BHA face wash to your acne prone areas in the morning for those of you suffering from post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is that it gives a little bit of added control for the acne that um, you know will be contributing to your post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And unlike other acids, unlike your alpha hydroxy acids, BHAs have the least chance of causing more post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So they're good in that regard. So just as I always do in my morning skincare routine, I'm just gonna quickly target this to the oil prone areas on my face. And for further explanation of this, check out my usual morning skincare routine. Yeah, and as I said in that video, this is just to acne prone areas. It does not go around the eyes. Um, it's just to get that little salicylic acid in the pores for a little bit of added acne control. So now I'm just gonna rinse this off as per usual. All right, and just as I show in all my skincare routines, now that my face has been insulted with water, yes, water is an irritant and can further dry out your face because as it evaporates, it takes water with it and it leads to transepidermal water loss and dryness. That dryness can further lend itself to irritation, which can cause more post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So I'm just gonna put on the brakes here on a little transepidermal water loss with my fragrance-free Hot Labo Super Plumping Gel Cream as I verbal as to my skincare routine. All right, now that I've got the Hot Labo Super Plumping Gel Cream on there, I'm now going to seal in that moisture with a moisturizing combination sunscreen. This is a zinc octinoxate sunscreen that I really like by Elta MD. It's the UV Clear. I like this one uh, because it is very moisturizing. And no, it won't clog pores. No, it's not greasy. It doesn't sting me. Stinging is something I can never predict or explain. It happens with, with, a, small, with a certain percentage of the population no matter what what it is is going to sting or burn when, when they put something on their face. Um, there are a variety of reasons, so it's hard to say for sure, but this does not sting or burn me. It's very, you know, minimal ingredients. The other ingredient in this that is great for people targeting dark spots and melasma is niacinamide, which can have a brightening effect. Um, but at this point, I am largely putting this on as a moisturizer. 
before the hydroquinone, okay? Because I'm gonna keep layering sunscreen on, but first of all, I'm gonna use this almost like a, a moisturizing sunscreen primer. Listen to me, stealing made up words from the makeup industry primer. Whenever I hear primer, I think to myself, that sounds like something as Zoolander would say, to teach kids to read good. <laughs> Not like something you put on your face, but um, far be it for me to, uh, to question the uh, nomenclature of the beauty industry. <laughs> and by having the skin hydrated and moisturized before putting the hydroquinone on, it reduces the chances of irritation from the hydroquinone. So I've got a good moisturized, moisturizing layer on with some baseline protection. Alternatives to the Elta MD UV Clear that you could also use in this morning routine that I love, CeraVe AM is another one that you can get at the drugstore that is likewise a combination sunscreen with zinc in it and niacinamide in it. Many people complain that this stings them. I can't explain that. Um, this one, fewer people complain of that. They have similar ingredients, slightly different filters, but um, hard to say for sure. And then another one that you could also try is the um, MD Complete Youthful Skin Sun Shield. This is another good combination sunscreen that is moisturizing and would achieve the same thing. Who else do I have here? I can list some others down below for you guys. All right, so now my skin is hydrated, moisturized, and has a sunscreen primer, if you will, layer on it. Um, and so I'm gonna come in with um, one pump of the MD Complete Dark Spot Corrector to areas of my face where I want to target it. If you wanna go for the entire face, you can use two pumps, okay? Um, you wanna make sure to spare around the eye area. So to keep yourself from getting it in those areas, to be extra cautious, you could use a little van, uh, Vanny Ply ointment, Vaseline ointment, or CeraVe healing ointment, okay? I'm not gonna do that um, right now, but that's something else that you could do, okay? All right, so see, it dispenses a perfect P. That is really all that you need, okay, for most hyperpigmentation concerns. Melasma is generally in the mask area here on the cheeks, um, and that's, this is more than sufficient, this is more than a sufficient amount of a product to target that in a thin film. So I'm now gonna apply that, um, let's just say um, in a melasma mask area here on my face, okay? You could also do it around the jawline if you have some post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation there. Um, you could also do this on the backs of the hands in a similar manner, although you probably wouldn't be using the salicylic acid face wash like I did, um, but that would be another way to use this if you have sunspots on the back of the hands that you're trying to target. <clears throat> Now, as I said, this product is very, it's gonna be very irritating. So you don't wanna go using a ton of it, just use a tiny amount as I showed. Um, and the way to start using this is to, in the beginning for at least the first week, just use it every other day in the morning as I'm showing you here. And if it's not too irritating um, and you feel comfortable with it and it's going well, then um, by the second or third week, you can go to using it every day in the morning. Um, and if that is okay after a few weeks, then you can try using it twice a day, okay? You can use it in the evening. All right, so now that the hydroquinone has set up on there and has dried and is in place, um, now I'm going to put on sunscreen, another layer of sunscreen, okay? And for this layer, I'm actually going to use a different sunscreen. I'm gonna be using the Murad City Skin Age Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 50 PA++++. This is a expensive, albeit, sunscreen, but it's a good one for people with <clears throat> dark spots and melasma. It is good because it is exclusively mineral. It has zinc and titanium. So it gives good protection against UVB, the, can the cancer-causing rays, as well as UVA, those rays that penetrate deeply and drive post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So it's really good in that regard, but it's also awesome in that it has um, iron oxides in it. Iron oxides um, will give you some protection into the broader wavelengths of visible light that drive post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and melasma. So this is a really phenomenal, albeit expensive, sunscreen for people with dark spots and melasma. 
An alternative to this one that is also very good and expensive, um, actually I think it's not, I don't think it's quite as good, but um, it's an alternative. And it is the Clinique Broad Spectrum SPF 50 Mineral Sun Fluid Shield. Again, I believe this also contains iron oxides and is a exclusively mineral sunscreen that is fragrance free. Um, it's really expensive, unfortunately. I mean, like really expensive. This tiny little bottle is really expensive. So, you know, that's another one that people will just ask me about. <clears throat> so I'm mentioning it here, um, but it is a good one. All right. As far as stuff you can get in the drugstore though that is not like going to break the bank, <clears throat> another one that I'm a fan of is the Cetaphil Redness Relieving Daily Facial Moisturizer. This one has a tint in it. It has iron oxides and is a mineral sunscreen, an exclusively mineral sunscreen. The tint in this is a little on the orangey side though, so not everybody is going to find that that works for their skin tone. You can see it's got a little orangey tint to it. So that's not ideal for all skin tones, but um, you know, it's, it's a starting point. A sunscreen in the drugstore that does not have iron oxides in it, but is fantastic and will get you good protection into UVA is Aveeno's Ultra Calming Daily Moisturizer. This one is fragrance free, um, broad spectrum SPF 30, highly recommend this one. And then another drugstore one that you could also do that is a combination sunscreen. So it is zinc and octinoxate, um, but is very affordable. Is Copper Tone Sensitive Skin Faces, SPF 50. A note about this one, it is the exact same sunscreen as the Copper Tone Water Babies. So that is an, another alternative. This one won't break you out, uh, but it is pretty heavy and it does leave a pretty substantial white film. Okay, I'm gonna list several sunscreens down below for you guys that are all good in this routine. Um, these are just some that I happen to have on hand that I'm showing you guys here. But for purposes of this video, I'm gonna use the Murad Environmental Shield um, just to show you guys. It has a slight pearly tint to it, which I kind of like. Um, but regardless of your skin tone, this um, doesn't really leave any kind of tint behind. Um, it just kind of leaves a nice, nice shield. But you want to make sure that you get all surfaces. So I'm going to get a good, good layer on my forehead, sides of my face here. You really want to get all around the eyes as well. You can't overdo it with sunscreen. You want to make sure you get the upper lip, all around the eyes, the sides of the face, your forehead, your entire nose, your chin, your lips, you definitely do not want to forget your neck. <laughs> and your ears, and when sunscreen first goes on it looks greasy and shiny, everybody wonders about that, they're like I look like an oil slick, eventually that Eventually that rubs in and soaks in and you're fine. Upper chest. Now these are all areas you want to make sure that you get your sunscreen on, but you know the sunscreens that we like on our face can be a little bit more expensive than the sunscreens than the sunscreens we'll put up with on our body. So for example, you may find that the Copper Tone Water Babies is too white and casty for you um, to put on your face, but you can tolerate it on your body. So rather than using your expensive face sunscreen on your body, just use that one. Um, but the Murad one, it's expensive, but it, it does have some good players in it for people looking to target dark spots and hyperpigmentation. All right, so I'm just putting a little, a little bit more sunscreen on my lips here, but now that the sunscreen is all on, once, once this layer is, is pretty dry, you can, you can start putting your makeup on. 
I have a hard time because I don't really wear makeup. All I wear is, you know, mascara. I have a hard time advising you guys on how to go about selecting sunscreens that don't pill up under your makeup because a lot of the ones that are best, <laughs> the mineral ones, the zinc, titanium dioxide, water resistant ones, those are going to make a nice film, a nice water resistant film, and a lot of the cosmetics are not going to layer on top of that very well. Mineral makeups tend to play a little bit better is my understanding. Your mineral powders, however, should do okay. Um, do, do know, however, that the mineral powders, while they um, have some SPF in them and talk about being sun protective, they are not um, a good means of sun protection alone because they don't, they don't give an even monolayer of sun protection or reliable um, application of SPF. So don't rely on powders, sprays, or sticks for your sun protection, okay? You really need a good base layer sunscreen that you apply to, uh, over the entire face at least two to three times a day, particularly when you're using hydroquinone because of the irritation, particularly when you are trying to target dark spots and melasma. It is really, 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 really the most important part of getting the dark spots to fade more quickly. So, you know, that really should be the priority. It's really difficult with makeup in terms of reapplying the sunscreen and not messing up the makeup, it becomes difficult. So some of the mineral powders can kind of be helpful for when you reapply and then you know you wanna to touch up your makeup, they do play a little bit better. Um, I've been using the Color Science Total Eye 3-in-1 um, Broad Spectrum SPF 35 Eye Renewal Therapy or whatever. Um, I use this as a tinted sunscreen under my eye area, uh, you know, where I have some dark spots and melasma that I want to, some dark spots, hyperpigmentation that I want to, to mask. Um, and this is nice because it's mineral and it has iron oxides in it, so I get a little bit of extra protection in that regard. And it goes well with my skin tone. I like this one. Um, they have a they have a powder, a mineral powder. Maybe I can try that one out and see how it does. But yeah, that's basically the um, morning routine with hydroquinone, starting hydroquinone. Key take home points go very, very slowly when starting hydroquinone. Again, every other day um, until you get used to the irritation, make sure that you are really, really conscientious of your sun protection, your sun exposure. Check the UV index in your area so that you're just keenly aware of how, how bad the day is going to be and how um, you know, aware you need to be, but always, 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 regardless of the UV index, you need to be reapplying sunscreen when using hydroquinone or just when trying to get rid of dark spots, melasma, or just because you have skin, skin needs protection, okay? So really, really, really just dial in your focus to sun protection when you're using hydroquinone. Minimize the use of essences, anything with fragrance, any kind of toner or harsh astringent, just just back away from all of that. Just channel in the focus to sun protection and getting used to the irritation of hydroquinone, okay? Don't try and peel the skin if this is irritating. Don't try and buff the skin. Don't try and do any of that. Just focus on sun protection, okay? Um, and and that will give this that will give this the best opportunity to to get you improvement in the dark spots and melasma. This is not a permanent solution. Oftentimes, oftentimes when you stop the hydroquinone, the dark spots and melasma come back, as I said in my Q&A. So be prepared for that. Using sunscreen along with this, however, will get you better results. We have good data to show that. You know, using hydroquinone can get people to sometimes in the 80% improvement range. Using it with a broad spectrum sunscreen can get them into the 96%. It is key. And using sunscreen alone can get you better. So it's something that is really, really important, okay? So I hope this skincare routine for starting hydroquinone was helpful to you guys. But if you like this video and it was helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.